Did you get any of your monitor mixing lessons at your guitar lesson? Or what about your drum lesson? No? Well, this video's for you. Today, I'm gonna walk you through how to set up your in-ear monitor mix if you're a musician on the worship team. Singers, you've got another video coming, so hit subscribe and ding the little bell to get notified, or look for it in the description below. The first thing you should do when setting up your monitor mixer is make sure that the output is set high enough. So many times I've seen people think, huh, I don't want it too loud, so they set their master volume too low. Then all their input signals get turned up too far and they run out of room. Some mixers have a trim function so you can turn everything down at once and turn up the master. But if you don't have that, you've pretty much got to start over. So always start with enough juice on your master. The second thing to check is to make sure that the EQ is set flat. If your EQ is boosted on the top and the bottom, you're gonna adjust your tone to compensate to sound normal. Then the tone that you're sending to the sound tech might be too dull or too thin, and that's not any good either. The goal of your monitor mix is to make it so that you play in time, in tune, and with the right dynamics. You don't wanna be going to 11 when everybody else is bringing it down. At the bare minimum, you need the primary instrument and the primary vocal so that you can know where you are in the song and where you're going in the song with the vocal cues. Next, you'll need some drums and bass. On my monitor setups, I like giving the band just a stereo drum mix so they can just turn it up and down. This way, you don't have to juggle a whole bunch of inputs. But if you've got all the inputs, all you really have to have is kick, snare, and overhead. You can add the toms, but they're gonna add a bunch of noise. The final thing that you need is yourself. You shouldn't just be able to hear yourself. You should just be able to hear yourself. You need to hear yourself in the context of the other instruments that you're playing. Otherwise, you can step all over the other players on stage and you can make a big mess and make it really hard for a sound guy to mix. Trust me, I can tell when somebody's turned themselves up and can only hear themselves. Now, the other part of setting your own level is that you have to understand that it's in the context of the dynamic range of your own instrument. Your instrument has a limit of how loud it can get and still sound good. Beating on guitar doesn't really make it sound any better. And drummers, smashing the cymbals doesn't really help either. We've got microphones on them. You can play them lightly. Know the limits of your instrument and how hard you should play to get it to sound its best. Then the sound tech can set the preamp and get you a good level coming into your monitor mixer. At that point, you should turn yourself up so that you fit in the context of the mix. If you've got yourself set too loud in the monitor mix, as the dynamic level goes up, you won't want to match that same intensity because you're already too loud and you're going to hurt your ears. If you've got your level set too low, you might dig in too hard to your instrument and push it beyond the place where it sounds good. After you turn up the bare essentials in your monitor mix, then you can start to add in the other things that can fill in the gaps. These additional elements can be panned to one side or the other. Try going hard left and right to make that space in the middle. If panning things hard left and right is too much, you can try to go to nine o'clock and three o'clock or as close in as 10 and two. I try not to go any closer than that because I wanna save all that space in the middle. If one of these main elements is getting covered up in the mix, ask yourself what's covering it up so that you can turn that down. If you set it up the right way, everything should be in place for those main elements. You've just gotta be careful not to cover it up with something else. So if you find yourself in a pinch and you've turned yourself all the way up, but you still need some more level, here's what you do. You have to ask the sound tech to send you a little bit more juice and warn everybody else because you're gonna get louder in their in-ear monitor mix too. Avoid the temptation to turn yourself up from your output on stage. If you do, it's gonna get louder for everybody else in their mix and it's gonna mess with the front of house mix as well. It's not a good idea. Now be sure that you can hear the other instruments that are related to your role. If you're playing bass, you really need to lock in with the kick drum and the primary rhythm instrument. You need to be right on those chord changes and you really need to be locked in with the rhythm of the kick drum to be the bridge between the drums and the rest of the rhythm instruments. If you're playing guitar, you need to make sure that you're not stepping on the toes of the keyboard player. And keyboard players, make sure that you've turned up the bass so that you're not stepping all over them with your left hand. Now a word for setting the level of your click track. I like to set it so that I can hear it when the drums aren't in, but when the drums are in, I'm following the drums. It's more important to be together than it is to be right. Now, one danger of yearning in-ear monitors is damaging your hearing. Nobody can tell how loud it is except for you. The other thing is that your ears will adjust to loud sounds and normalize them. So if you turn up your in-ear monitors too loud and get that big feeling, eventually your ears will adjust to that as the new normal. Then to get that feeling back, you crank it up just a little bit more. Then that feeling goes away again and you crank it up some more. And before you know it, you've damaged your hearing without even realizing it. It's kind of like a frog in a frying pan. You really have to be careful. The other thing is that if your monitor mix is really bad, nobody knows it but you. If you're having trouble, just ask for help. You weren't born knowing how to make a mix. It took you a long time to learn how to play your instrument. It's not gonna be a surprise to anybody if learning to mix your monitors takes a little bit of time. 
Now, while we're talking about protecting your hearing, make sure that you keep both in-ears in. When you take out one in-ear monitor, it tricks your brain because your brain measures how loud something is by the average of both your ears. So if you've got it too loud in one ear, but not very loud in the other one, your brain isn't gonna sound that alarm and say, too loud, ah! So it's really important to keep both in-ears in. Now you might be struggling of going from this big spacious sound when you take your in-ear monitors out to having that closed off, isolated feeling when you put them in. And that's normal. A lot of people struggle with that. But there are some things that you can do to help it. Now some mixers have an ambient mic built in. And while this can be great for communication during rehearsal, I've never really heard it sound good in the middle of a performance. Go ahead and turn it down. It'll really unclutter your mix. But you can place a couple mics on the front of the stage pointed out to give you that room feeling and to hear that crowd interaction. Shotgun mics work really well for that. But if you don't have the budget for it, a pair of 57s can work just fine. Make sure you roll off some of the low end so that rumble doesn't come in and clutter up your mix, but it can work wonders for adding space to your in-ear monitors. Now you have to have in-ear monitors that fit well. If they're not sealed in your ear, you won't get any low frequency response from them. And if your tips are too big, they'll be uncomfortable and start to make your ear hurt. Custom molds aren't that expensive, and if you're playing a lot, you should really consider in investing in some. Now, if you're just using consumer earbuds, you're setting yourself up for failure. You really have to have a clear mirror in which to see yourself and the rest of the team in order to play well. The ones that I use are the Mi Audio M6 Pros. They sound pretty good. They go for about 50 bucks, and they come with a bunch of different tips so that you can find the size that fits you well. I put an affiliate link in the description down below. So let me put on my in-ears, play some tracks for you, and show you how I set up a monitor mix. Now let's imagine that I'm playing bass and building my monitor mix. In this song, the keyboard is the primary rhythm instrument, so I'm gonna turn that up first along with the worship leader. Come and meet us where we are Find here that which you are drawn to A broken and a contrite heart With hearts wide open so if I was in a pinch, with just this, I could probably play and get through the set. Now this mixer is fed by a stereo drum mix, but all I've got going into it right now is kick, snare, and overheads. But I can show you how you can get the entire kit just with those three inputs. It makes it a lot simpler to mix. Now watch as I mix in a stereo keyboard and a pair of guitars. The guitars I'm gonna pan hard left and right so I can get good separation of who's playing what. The keyboard's stereo already, and I'm gonna keep that pretty low just for when everything else drops out. Oh God. So there you have it, a pretty good monitor mix. I made sure that my master level was set right before I started, so I'm not running into everything being pinned all the way down to the side. Now in this song, there's other vocalists, but I don't have to turn them up. It's just gonna add noise. If there are other singers taking a lead element, make sure that they get turned up too. But if they're just singing harmonies, I don't have to have them up. Also, you don't have to have the lead vocal way out in front of your monitor mix. You just have to be able to hear where you are in the song and where you're going dynamically. You absolutely don't want to miss any vocal cues so that you know where the band is going. Hey, if this video is helpful for you, share it with a friend, hit thumbs up, click subscribe, and ding the little bell to turn on notifications. Check out some more tutorials over here, and we'll see you back here next time.